Hello and Mike. welcome to Wook Hub Gaming, your one-stop shop for unprofessional opinions about video games, as proven by Dale's unprofessional interruption of my introduction. <laughs> um, on this week's episode, we will be talking about mine and Lloyd's trip to WASD, the Games Expo in London, which is the spiritual successor to EGX Rest. Um, and we're also going to be talking about a few issues around game streaming, streaming services and the different sides of the experience for game devs, as well as a whole load of news that has come from Activision Blizzard about changes in the organization there. My name's Phil, and as ever, I'm joined by nobody loves indie games quite like him, and sometimes he even finishes them rather than rage, rage quitting. It's Lloyd. Thanks for calling me out there. Nice one. Yeah, appreciate that one. <laughs> And I should be nice about him because he graduated the other day um, and he's all clever and stuff. But um, the man for whom every game is an FPS run and gun, even when they're not, it's Dale. That's very fitting, Phil. It is true. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I hope you're well. Um, you can find us lurking on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Uncap Gaming. Um, and you can see even more of our content on YouTube, which you should be subscribed to if you're not already. Um, and join our community in Discord, all of which is linked in the description at the bottom of this video or this podcast episode, depending on where you are experiencing this lovely journey. Um, but before we go into any of the big stuff, the question that we always ask at the top of the episode, what have you been playing? And yeah. let's go to Dale first, because it feels like we've left him alone for a week to his own devices, so... <laughs> you are. Uh, <laughs> I thought the question was going to be, who are you? And I was going to be like, I don't have a clue. Um, so, me, video games. We've been friends the past week. We've done things together. We've gone on some adventures. I've been playing Monster Hunter again. Quite a lot. And when I say quite a lot, I mean quite a lot. It's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> But now, yeah, I've been, I've been playing Rise again. I um, streamed a little to get ready for the new DLC coming out in June, which I'm, like, up to date now. I'm all ready, so I decided, why the hell not? Might as well learn some new weapon types. And I started learning the hammer, and shout out to all my hammer mains, because, my lord, it is fun. You just whack a monster in the face with a giant piece of another monster and watch it stagger around because it doesn't know what it's doing because you've just whacked it in the face. It's, it's so much fun. It's good. I endorse this type of, type of violence, you know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm breaking the meme. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've been enjoying it. I've, I've been thinking a lot about the game as well and how I rank it versus Worlds. And I think this would be interesting for Lloyds because... I know we both love worlds and how good world is, but um, yeah, I think it's I think world's better, but yeah, it is. That's a whole another spiel. That's a whole another thing. And Lego Star Wars, which Lloyd, did you get Lego Star Wars? He did. Oh, I stole his game. Oh, I stole his game again. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Like it's so good. But yeah, I'll let Lloyd talk about that a little, because I spoke about one yeah. but yeah. Yeah, well, on that front, Lloyd, um, obviously, no mention of the WASD games, because we'll come on to that in a minute, but... Um, yeah. what have you, have you, have you, <laughs> since we last did an episode, what have you played other than when we went to London? Uh, so, it wasn't in London, it was on the way to London, but I played Lego Star Wars, uh, as Dale said. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really... I, oh, it was... It, they kind of made it, like, open-world-ish, which... They all will, like yeah agree. no yeah. they have it's it's really cool um yeah. and I I'm still on the Phantom Menace because I've just been wandering around um <laughs> so like I've just been and but the thing is is because I haven't unlocked anyone I can't do anything so yeah I, just, like, I, I found that yeah bump into things like oh that's cool I'll remember that for later yeah, yeah. just completely forget you forget yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah <laughs> obviously like. This weekend's been super busy. Uh, I started a new job, quit my new job. Because <laughs> it wasn't the greatest job. Um, He's in high demand, you know. He's a high demand um, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I came back yesterday and in time for the to be with these lovely people. Hi. Um, so, yeah, that that's why. You, you can't you can put that on your CV though. Say you, you're so high energy and so productive that you can start and quit a job within the same week. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for any, I mean, sorry, sorry for any employers out there. It was just not. It was not my cup of tea. So that, to, that's to be fair, I've I've done it. It's, yeah, 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 
You get that feel. I think it's more of an mm. older thing, isn't it? Once you get older, you kind of learn like, nah, I'm not, I'm not settling into this. But when, yeah, you're, yeah. when you're younger, you're like, oh, I guess I'll just try through it. I, I need money. But then when you're older, yeah. you're like, I'm worth more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's t very easy, almost too easy to settle and then be stuck there yeah, for 40 yeah. years and yeah, yeah, yeah. not be right. Um, Oh yes, any employers listening, uh, Lloyd is lovely, and I would highly <laughs> recommend him. <laughs> I should have really said that live on the internet. I, I want to be. I want to be the. the <laughs> can I be the anti-reference? If you need the anti-reference for Lloyd, let me know. I have all his bad habits and his uh, <laughs> his toxic <laughs> traits. I know them all. It's fine. I basically, I basically rage quit my job. That's what I did. <laughs> Oh, that's the dream. Oh, uh, you know, I yeah, this is this is a tangent already in the beginning. But me and Lloyd worked together for what, like two years. Would you say? Three, no, it was three than years. That. Three years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three years, and every single day we spoke about quitting together. It was incredible. <laughs> every single day, there was not a day where we didn't talk about quitting together. Oh, this you... is definitely the podcast I don't put on my portfolio. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't put this on there, especially since I've come out and I'll be an anti-reference to you now. <laughs> I will if they want bad things about you. I'll tell them the bad things, Lloyd. <laughs> Uh, narrator's voiceover. This is why they went unemployed for the next forty years. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> need money. Gas prices need, are going up. You need that. You know the end of the film, so they do the grayscale. Where are they now? Dale is now yeah. wandering, <laughs> wandering forests because he doesn't know what happened. <laughs> um. But anyway, yeah. Let's let's move swiftly on before this becomes yeah. like the hole we can't dig ourselves <laughs> out of. Um. So yeah, I mean, other than other than obviously the games we'll talk about, which were at the expo, uh, my main experience is this. Well, two weeks technically, um, where in the survival horror, no one, I think, no one will be surprised to, to hear. Um, so like survival I can, horror games. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've never mentioned it. <laughs> um, so I finally completed Tormented Souls, which is absolutely fantastic it's got its flaws but it's it's a superb game as far as if you want that old school experience from like the late 90s early 2000s with like all the modern upgraded tech that, that goes with it to make it as smooth as it can possibly be um and it's an indie title as well so any of the most of the flaws you can kind of forgive for being a smaller team and not a triple a production um but yeah absolutely superb on the other hand, I also played uh, Resident Evil Survivor, which for anyone who doesn't know is like an offshoot spin-off game that came out um, on the PlayStation 1 era, like Resident, Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 came out, which are all obviously mainline Capcom games. This was made by a separate like ghost, like not like it's one of those company game dev companies that doesn't put its name on things. It like sort of ghost writes the games almost. Um, and it's it's interesting. It's a first person shooter, effectively, it was made for a light gun. Um, I was playing it with a controller, which was the clumsiest, clunkiest thing ever in terms of trying to shoot. Um, it's it's actually not as bad as it seems because like the the story quite interesting, if cheesy, um, and all this sort love of stuff. A, love a good bit of cheese, though. Cheese makes a game. Come on. Well, I mean, the whole the whole plot revolves <laughs> around a guy who. Um, crashes out of a helicopter and then has amnesia so it's it's a cliche from the beginning <laughs> and then he mistakenly thinks that he's the villain when he after he finds some misleading information and then there's also a great line later on where you hear like you're in a secret umbrella lab and you hear a voice message from the villain's mother telling him to come home and stop committing all those horrible crimes <laughs> uh, but it's 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 infuriating as a gameplay experience like if it was remade as a as a modern first person survival you know, thing it could be yeah. something fantastic but it's it's just awful it, like, as far as the way the controls work you, you can tell it's made for a type of control that you don't have um yeah but it's still enjoyable in its own way no there you go there you go but uh yeah so that that's uh got water down myself sorry Yo, messy, messy boy. <laughs> so, I mean, your, your CV is looking ever more impressive as we go on. Oh, you're, you're, you're just sp spilling things on yourself now. <laughs> he's just fired. That's his permanent job status. I, I, I'm going to rage at this podcast if you guys carry on. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it'd just be, do you know, do you know on your LinkedIn profile where it says what you are, like in your thing on your subhead, and it'd just be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Um, consistently unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. On, a, on, on a somewhat brighter note than that, though, um, I say the big, the main thing that we want to talk about this episode is on. Uh, it was the seventh to ninth of April in London's Tobacco Dock. Mm-hmm. Uh, the well, WASD, which we had been pronouncing WASD, but apparently is officially pronounced WASD. Uh, the, 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 the the game expo in London, <laughs> which. Um, as I mentioned before, spiritual successor to EGX Res, a lot of focus on indie and PC titles. Not really much in the way. Well, nothing sort of AAA. There were some bigger studios there, but they were mostly like promoting stuff from independent developers that they've got under their kind of head and there. Um, that we we were there for three days. They gave they gave us of all people press passes. I mean, it's, it's it was definitely like uh, imposter syndrome. It, it, yeah. Like people were like, "Oh my god, you're pressed!" Like, what did you do? And like, we met some people through it as well, which was quite nice because they were like, "How'd you get them?" And yeah, we were just like, "Yeah, yeah, we we, we make YouTube videos." <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I don't know if you want to kick off, Lloyd, as your sort of like, oh, it was, yeah, it was, it, it was, yeah, it was just, it was just sick. Like, it was just so much there. Um, so, like, my, I'd say, like, my find of the, the event was Shadows of Doubt uh, from uh, Fire Shrine. I finally got it right. Fire Shrine. I called them all sorts. I called them Fly Fly. Fire Guys. Fire Fly. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was really sick. It was like this like randomly uh, generated open world detective game. So like every, every experience is new. Uh, every case is new. Um, and you just go around like it's like. So I was assuming it was like very like Sherlock Holmes where it was going to be very linear, very sort of like direct like directed um which is basically what linear means but okay um <laughs> um and then but it was so you're basically placed into this open world and you've got to go around and you've got to look for clues and kind of link where where things were were passed around um and like link them all up on this board that you open and it just gets chaotic and you have no idea and then you've got to get rid of things because it's so chaotic and it's just yeah and it was so sick and like you um so another thing you could do is like it's very stealth based so you can go around you've got to like avoid the cameras you've got to turn them off um i learned the hard way that one of the breakers actually shuts the security doors so i was like locked in a building for about 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get out um and you climb through your vents it was just so good there was just i could go on all day saying the stuff but yeah i would i would definitely recommend checking that out uh, yeah so is it do, do you become pretty sus when you take the vents? Ah, oh, but um, so, yeah, I, I didn't go was the I'm pronouncing it was from like I'm sorry, it's was. So I'm just here to pronounce little to to announce little funny things and anecdotes that I can make about the games that you play. So that's that's well, my role in this. Well, you, you you can be the uh, avatar for our listeners and audience who haven't been there and ask us questions or anything. What's this mean? What are you on about? Um, Why is it called WASD and not WASD? Um, that we don't know the answer to. I think that was a, a yeah, we were, creative yeah. decision someone had made somewhere. I think it sounds grander if we add an E. <laughs> yeah, WASD, like it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. WASD as does. E. What do you mean? Was. It's such a harsh like finish, though. Like WASD. D. It's such a hard thing. Damn it. <laughs> That's my excuse. That's my thinking of it. Uh, sorry, yeah. Video games. Video yeah, games. Well, I mean, um, so when we went, the, there was kind of two aspects to it. There were the various rooms with all the games in and everything else, which were which we'll I'm sure we'll talk about at left. And anyone who is subscribing to our YouTube channel or to our website will see the stuff we put up about particular games that have been a highlight for us and that's going to like it, by the time this is going out there should be already quite a few up and then there'll be a few more to come in terms of reviews of certain games um and then there was also a series of talks um on the two stages one was kind of general interest stuff talking about different topics within gaming that might have been an interest like we, we attended um i'm trying to think on the subjects now it was 
one on uh, nostalgia and relaxing games. Yeah, yeah, there was there was uh, uh, that was really the, cool. Nostalgia games, relaxing games. One about like the the carbon footprint of the games industry. One about like um what you do once you've got an idea for a game and how it co- kind of goes and stuff like that. And there were a few others to that effect. Um, and then there was also like a games career stage, and they also seem to have companies doing like one to one with people who were like aspiring game devs and like looking at their portfolios and stuff like that. So like seemed quite cool like, in terms of being there for the fans and like people who want to just wander around and go, ooh, shiny games, which I think was was us. Uh, <laughs> and then people who were like, right, so I'm I'm here because I want to be in the industry and do this, and I want to get in the industry and. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, they they did that at EGX as well when we went, didn't they? Um, we yeah, had a, we had a couple. Of, I think it's uh, I think it kind of works across. Did they do an insomnia? I don't think they did. I don't if remember. they did, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah, know. yeah. So I think insomnia. We went with like a group of friends. friends and it was yeah, more, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was the Call of Duty there as well, wasn't it? And yeah, we yeah. Discovered Pokemon cards. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I I think it is very much. Uh, like and obviously part being part of London Game Fest as well, so that that's probably why it was like that mixture. Whereas like like I said, like Insomnia, it, I don't, I can't remember if there was, but it was very much more fan based than kind of going around playing games. Which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think um, I mean <clears throat> for me, the the there were like three highlights. I think um, which I'm not going to surprise anyone again who's watched the videos. But um, so there was the last hero of Nostalgia, which was um, a comedy Souls like, uh, <laughs> which it plays like it plays like uh, you know haven't played Demon like Demon Souls. You got that same similar mechanics in terms of your dodge roll and your block and your parry um, and strikes and stuff. And then it obviously you've got to learn it and, and master it. Otherwise, you're gonna get battered and killed quite easily. But it's also got that kind of hung in cheek humor. Um, and it also like there was another Souls like game from Team Seventeen, I think. Yeah, Team Seventeen. Uh, yeah, which I can't remember the name of, but I know I got fed up with it quite quickly because it was like an overly complicated combat system where there were like several different types of attack, and it's like almost mixed up like the Bloodborne type parry where it was like in this case throw some throw knives, but like in Bloodborne's like shoot the parry. Like to disrupt the attack type thing versus like the Dark Souls ones where you tried to have both, and then there were like three different kinds of attack, and it was just like shoulder buttons and main face buttons, and it was just like right, I'm getting mixed up and confused, and I'm not getting, and this is just ridiculous. So that one I don't think landed quite as well. So Nostalgia I definitely got both of those things right: the the humor and also the the combat balance. The the thing that cracked me up about Nostalgia was the character creation. So um, I don't know if you any like, uh, so he's like a pixelated stick man basically, and um, the armor just kind of sits on top of him. Um, and like as we walk, we were walking past the first day, that one of the security guards was like, "That's a bit of a, a crap, uh, crap p- protagonist. Why would you make that as your protagonist?" But he had dreamy pixelated eyes, and I just fell in love with him. But um, he was uh. <laughs> He was like, yeah, it was. It was just like, and then you go with lost like, in those pixels. Oh, gorgeous, <laughs> nice and white. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you go into the character creation screen, and it's like it's it kind of does this um, thing where it gives you all the options, but it doesn't actually do anything because it's obviously like just a pixelated thing. And it, it's like it's it's like it's <laughs> such just from the off. It was just hilarious, and it kind of like it's one of those games that will instantly. I I think it will just instantly grab you and just like make you want to play more I, that's that's a genre i think that kind of needs a humor game to it yeah and i think mm. that'll help people get over how hard and how you know um draining those because they can be draining playing souls like especially yeah. when you've been killed like 80 times by one boss i mean you saw the end of my uh my Elden Ring stream when I was just running into that boss and people were like, take a break, Dale. I was like, no, 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 no. A break's not going to solve nothing. No, I'm just going to keep running at him. Yeah. So I think that humor (laughs) would be a a nice little break. Obviously, I I don't think, like, it's a genre where it'll turn into a humor-based genre, 
but it's it, it, it'd be like a nice welcome thing you know it's it's something that needs at least one or two to do it you know yeah it's definitely not going to change like anything in the genre but like yeah it, it was it like I, it kind of there was things that it just like the, the so it's narrated over the top basically and he just takes the mech out of your your character mm -hmm. um and it you can like it's just some of the things he says um just like kind of rip into the souls genre a bit and be like you know here's like kind of get good <laughs> and stuff but um yeah it was, a, it was a great game and like the guys at code sync were awesome as well to speak to so yeah i mean i think that's one of the things if we found pretty much the whole place wasn't it was everyone was enthusiastic to talk to you go, oh you yeah. want to play my game let's let's talk to you about it let's be um enthusiastic and it and because it was small enough you could have those conversations like it wasn't like i'm sorry i'm swamped because there's like a crowd of 50 people in this one booth um so you're never gonna get to speak to anyone it's just you could most i mean there were times when you couldn't get on a certain game but there was always you generally got we well we i don't know whether we did because we were because we were press and we mistaken for people who were important uh, <laughs> but yeah we, we generally did get to speak to people so that was good yeah, it, that, I think that's the one thing I preferred to this event to like EGX was like EGX. It was just you're constantly bumping into people. Like it, mm. it, it was like rammed sort of alleyways. Whereas this was a bit more open and like people were more spreadly wide out, spread out. And because it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday rather than a uh, is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday at EGX or was it the four days? I think I think it had four days, didn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. We did Thursday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, and I think because it was the Thursday and the Friday, it was a bit quieter obviously because yeah of work and stuff so yeah it, it, it was just it was really nice to get to speak to people and like get to know more about the game and the games and and like obviously the devs are there as well it's not just like the pr guys from the publishers um especially when you went into the indie section um you, you know you, you got to like actually speak to the devs and that was really cool yeah though because there were quite a few people pulled we uh me and lloyd played a game called we were here forever which was like you had to sit up you had to make sure you couldn't <laughs> see each other's screens but then describe to each other like how to get through these different rooms so we're like trying to navigate each other by walkie talkie so and you couldn't talk at the same time but then like realizing like we have no way of like universal way of describing directions it's like let's just go over the oh you can't see me down down <laughs> The oh. best thing, the best thing about that was me trying to like describe the concept of the game because <laughs> I, I, I did I discover it first. I think I was like, you got to match the the doors up, and then I was like, <laughs> so I was like trying to explain it, but obviously it's push to talk, and like I'd let go of the mouse and stuff, so I just cut myself off, and it was just <laughs> I was like, I'm so bad at communication. Yeah, but we did, that, we did, that we game was it. sick. It was so good though, but we only had twenty minutes. I think if we had like another four days, we would have we would have done it. <laughs> yeah as long as we could just be chained there until we escape we would see at some point <laughs> uh, yeah that, that was that was it was like a really cool idea because um so the you basically unlock the rooms that that so certain rooms have keys in them and then you unlock you unlock new rooms um and then you've basically got to try and get together um so it's like you've done all this work to unlock all these rooms and now you've got to figure out the way to get together and then it's even harder now because you've got all these rooms and it's like where, where do i yeah. go next sort of thing. Um, so you're kind of unlocking more that makes it harder but you're progressing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it, because it's not you're in a ball basically you create the ball around you okay. um, so you're like looking up and you're trying to figure out where the symbols match on the rooms and stuff um uh, it's yeah it was just such a good such a good concept i think and yeah, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's one made for people who are really good at communicating with yeah. each other, rather than people who just go um and do thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there were quite a few multiplayer things on offer. Like, so there was in the same room. There was also a guy who was promoting something called bullion, which was um basically bull pirates. On an island, oh. and it's like a fight. Fight. You have to fight like for each other for the treasure. But it's like it's explicitly been made as a couch co-op. Because like, say, for families or groups of friends to play, like when they're all physically together. Like the the guy there was like 
telling us about like that was kind of his vision was to try and get more sort of human contact out of it and that, that kind of thing and use that so that was quite interesting and then i think the one that struck me is like the big the multiplayer that like you'll see on every youtuber's channel once it comes out type thing is it's called golf gang which oh is a yeah racing game yeah. where you as golf balls um and you so you it mechanics are dead simple click mouse hold down pull back release ball flies off with as you know fast or as not and then you've got to get around it it's a mini golf course it's not like straight so it's like lots of obstacles water and then you can add in modifiers like the more times you um swing the bigger the ball gets making it harder if you, you can <laughs> explosive collisions yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like I, love, I, love I like how that. like yeah, I got I got the hang of it, and I was like, because Phil was like kicking my ass at first, and then I was like, I've got the hang of it, and I'm winning every game. We went into a competition, they added these modifiers, and I just finished last. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, oh! uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and there, there's there was actually another golf game as well, Curse to Golf. Um, so it's like a platformer golf game, uh, oh, which, okay. w- which was really cool. So that like obviously very unique kind of movement style. And you basically just got to hit the ball. But you've got, like, ace cards and stuff. So you can, like, stop the ball in midair. You can get extra shot. But you've got to do, obviously do it within a par count. Um, so you get limited shots and stuff. Um, cool. that, looks, that looks like it's going to be loads of fun. Um, What's the boom in um, golf games lately? Uh, I think that was just, like, kind of he wanted to make a platformer, but different. Yeah. Uh, it seems like it seems like people have realized that golf itself is boring, so let's like, you know, <laughs> make it fun. <laughs> Cause it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm this is my disagree. controversial statement of the thing. <laughs> but golf is boring. If you enjoy golf, you you're probably you're boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joking, it's a joke. You can enjoy what you want, it's just golf's boring. <laughs> but no, there's there's some really good like um like golf with friends um and there's yeah. a few other ones in there and they they they're quite think, a laugh you know I think it's because of the like obstacle it's almost like an obstacle course in terms of like yeah a lot of them are mini golf and they they're not like full on golf yeah that's yeah, yeah. So, it's like, I, I think PGA it's more the Tour Twenty Two is idea. not taking off uh... <laughs> 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 or, or golf count. simulator although the, the the simulators that were most popular there were Lawnmower Simulator and Power Wash Simulator. So <laughs> oh, both of them look amazing. The Lawnmower Simulator, it, it's like, it's really hard, but because yeah. you're like trying to draw faces and all sorts of other <laughs> things yeah. in there. You are actually supposed to like mow the lawn properly. Like, there's yeah. like, you get points and you get penalties if you dig too deep. And then there was me with the, with the hedge trimmer, just like carving ox into the ground. <laughs> PG thirteen, please. Um, yeah, Damn. And, and like you get like fuel and stuff as well. So you, you've got like, you've got time limit to do things, and you're against. The, yeah, you're definitely against the clock. But it was sick. And and oh oh, and I also got a chance to play Honey. I joined the cult, which is a great game. Oh, that looks incredible. Yeah, it was so good. Like it's just like you. Um, so you, obviously you get the cult, you get the lecture hall. I I built a prison because why not? Um, and then. Yeah, and then you build like a yoga place in the corner. That it was, yeah, it's, it's very much like just a, a mick take out of like management sims, but it's just well, not a mick take, but it's it, just a funny version. Like, and it's just really stupid. It's yeah. just really yeah. stupid. Just really, I like that. Although it has yeah. to be said that like Lloyd's um, ability of being a cult leader, as shown by that, and then Cult of the Lamb as well. It's just. I think we should watch out at some point if you see like his followers <laughs> flocking, um, waiting for the next UFO to take them to the promised land. <laughs> yeah, yeah Cotton um, the Lamb was good. I, I, I kind of enjoyed that. I think the demo didn't show off enough for me to be like, this is going to be a great game. But because um, it, like, obviously it's two sides. So you've got the, the like roguelite sort of side of it, which is the combat and everything. And then you've got the base building. But it didn't really show how they like connected like obviously so the roguelite you go through the dungeons and you kind of unlock um new followers and you unlock um like resources and stuff to build but it didn't really show how like the base building could benefit that so i'm assuming it's all like power-ups and stuff but um yeah i i'm keep i'm keeping my eyes open for it and kind of hoping 
there's more gameplay than the 20 minutes I got to play, but um, I'm I'm a bit bit skeptical about it. It's it's going to be a good game, I think. But I, I suppose I that's the, the really difficult thing, ain't it, for uh, specifically indie games? Because I suppose AAA games don't need to worry about it. But it's like the um, what you don't and do show off, yeah, in the mm. demo, you know, yeah, because I it's obviously very story driven. Mm. Um, so it, it's like you don't want to show off too much of it. If that makes sense, but you also want to show off every bit of it, and you've got twenty minutes to do it. So it's like you know, you, and then you, it's you kind need of enough to hook people in, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it, yeah, like I'm just I'm not gonna make a judgment on that demo. That's what I mean by being skeptical. I'm not like it's going to be a bad game. I'm just more yeah. not making a final judgment. I suppose that. I suppose it's a really interesting thing to look up because there's there's no right or I suppose there's a lot of wrong ways to do it, but there's no like no set every, right way to do it. You know what I yeah, mean? Everything's every, going to be different. Yeah, because like there's like Curse the Golf, for example, managed to show off what I think is going to be the whole game in that 20 minutes that I got to play because it, it's kind of going to follow that. Same structure. Yeah, yeah, it's got that same gameplay loop. Yeah, you know, yeah. Relatively what's going on, yeah. yeah That's so, fair. Whereas, like, Cult of the Lamb, I want to see a bit more before I'm like, yeah, this is a great game. This is going to be... I'm definitely still excited for it because I think the idea is really cool, but... Yeah. Any um, Silk Song stuff there, or...? Nah. nah it's a waste of an event, then. Nah, no, no Silk please. Song. The only uh, Metroidvania we got was um, one called Imp of the Sun. Looked very cute and was quite interesting to play for a little while. But again, I'm sure they're, lo- I'm sure they're lovely devs, but it's not Silk Song. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was Fire Shrine as well, wasn't it? That was next to Shadows of Doubt, yeah. Yeah, the, and, and they also did Silt, which is a very eerie black and white underwater game where you're like a diver going through. It's kind of like um, if. Echo the Dolphin was made by HP Lovecraft. Um, okay. So instead of the dolphin, you've got the diver, and then he, you can also possess these other creatures. And then there's, there is definitely, a, I mean, I think the deep sea is very eldritchy in real life anyway, but there's, there was definitely kind of the sense that you were leading towards something horrific. Yeah. <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Yeah, so on their promotional stuff, they've got because I, I played the demo before we went. Um, it's like they've got like what looks like this trained up monster as well. So I think there's going to be some mad things going on in that game. But uh, it looks it looks sick. I can't wait to play. But um, I've also got a game for Dale. So yeah, it's, like, it's got dinosaurs. Oh, I'm in. Send me the wish list thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm buying it already. Yeah. So <laughs> what is it? Uh, okay, as Vale. Uh, it was it won the Transfuser competition. Uh, oh. so it's still like in the early stages at the moment but um yeah it's uh kind of like this um so you basically get a pet dinosaur that you can like ride around and it can bash things and it can do do all sorts of stuff and then you've got to pick up this egg uh which the dev said kind of hatches into this uh into another pet and stuff um it, it yes, you please. could tell it was definitely in the early stages so i'm not gonna kind of make too much of a judgment on it i don't know like, but the art style was absolutely phenomenal so i'd definitely go and check out the devs if i like, uh yeah they're called Meteor- meteorite media um i'll definitely go check them out um the game looks stunning so i mean anyone making a dinosaur game is a good game to me or a good dev to <laughs> me or they deserve to be in my wish list regardless True. Yeah, that, that's definitely one for Dale. I'll just be roaming around, but I've got a dinosaur. <laughs> Woo! Got a dinosaur! Just, just you guys, like, oh yeah, I finished it. Where are you two, Dale? And it just cuts to my POV as me <laughs> screaming and just pure joy riding a dinosaur. Uh, just um, everybody do the dinosaur on repeat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so you enjoyed the event then? Loved it was it. good. Yeah, yeah? It was, it was, was it was in not, well, Phil. This is it's your first gaming event. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I wasn't sure what to, because, like, I've, whenever I've been to my previous experience with conferences was not anything to do with video games, so it was a very different affair, and it was a lot drier and duller, we'll definitely say. Um, or well, the gaming yeah. event. No, no, <laughs> this, this, uh, this was a lot more fun and, like, a lot more alive and 
Mm. I, I think I like the fact that although obviously the talks were kind of time sensitive, the fact that you could just take your time and do everything in whatever order you wanted and wander around and like I say, the the personal aspect of just people coming up and be like, "Oh, you you're interested in my game? Let me talk to you." That was, yeah. I think, very good because it, it's always good when people are like genuinely enthusiastic for things rather than just yeah, they're trying to sell. I something. am selling a product. But, yeah. Uh, it's intoxicating, isn't it? Listening to someone be passionate about something, even if you're not passionate about it, it just gets you like just, just so hyped. It's nice. Yeah. I like that. So you enjoyed the Enfield. Your first your first gaming event was was a success. I did. Baby baby's first gaming event was <laughs> No. Oh. And how was it how 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 was it being back then though? Was it oh, nice? Mate. Speaking to people, oh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, it's just so nice to speak to people about games, and and not <sighs> you guys. <laughs> but I'm joking. Um, but it was, it was, yeah, it was just really nice. I was gonna, like, I was gonna disconnect from the uh, the <laughs> thing then as a sign of protest, but then I think the audio listeners would be very confused yeah. as to what happened. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. It's, it, yeah, it's like Phil said. It's just like listening to someone. Like it was like the Bullions guy, for example. Um, I forgot his name, but um. Like it was just so nice to see him being generally like enthusiastic because I spoke to him the day after we spoke to him as well, and he was like so generally like enthusiastic about the game and like what it could do and the impact it could have on on like the get um not the gaming space the like the community in terms of like people meeting up and stuff. So it's it's really nice to kind of see that passion there and like. Mm. Yeah, and just see all the mad things that people are coming up with. But y- plus, you know. he was in he was in costume with a giant bull's head at his side. Yeah, so. that, that did help <laughs> track, attract us to him. But yeah, and he he was like he just gen- he was like just really approachable, and he like came up and just top guy. And yeah, yeah that, that that's the thing. Like that's why these events are so great compared to like just I'm going to sell you a product today. Die. <laughs> I'm selling you a pro. I don't know where that accent went. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think <laughs> no, one was in, bi- was in Birmingham and then you, you went to Australia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm tired, okay. I can get away with it. Um, uh, so before we move on to the next kind of topic uh, from your point of view, Lloyd, any kind of further honorable mentions as far as games or anything? Mm. Uh, Hard West 2. I would say, I think that was really fun. Uh, turn-based combat game. Um, I never actually played Hard West One, but it like took a turn when all the undead people started coming out. Uh, ooh. Yeah, he's on dark, the- dark fracture as well has to be an XMA fill jump. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and that uh, has been recorded for posterity on. Uh, t- I didn't even realize he recorded you. To be honest, yeah. for, for your damn it, <laughs> if you. Via Derek's Twitter page, they put a video up of all the people jumping from the game, which included yours truly. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and probably Track to Yomi has to be in there. Um, that's kind of overtaken Cot of Land for me at the moment because like, I love the cinematic platform, like 3, 2.5D sort of thing. Just but, play, uh, play, it, play it on the easiest difficulty, though. <laughs> 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 as Phil learned the hard way. Yeah, yeah I, I just put it on what Cute I thought was medium, normal difficulty, and like every single time, like the level of precision required for every parry it was just, it was just, too, I couldn't even get to like the first bridge type thing. And then Lloyd was like miles ahead. I was like, why are you so far? Am I, am I crap at this? And he, oh, I just put it on story modes. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> uh... Up here for thinking, down here for playing games. Yeah, boy. Wee. Wee. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I was. But... Oh. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I would agree with all of that as far as further honorable mentions. But um, yeah, so that that was was the. I, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, hopefully, next time we will get to bring Dale along. Uh, it gets dangerous with me around, you know. Pokemon cards, I'll battle you. Yeah, and, and <laughs> drinking in hotel lobbies, dancing out at four in the morning, singing baggy trousers. Was, yeah. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. maybe we could have convinced you to <laughs> spend the, the... Was it £200 for the, do- the dark saber? Oh, I would, yeah, no. Well, I have to speak to, uh, you know... Like, I, I, I was supposed like to that. buy it. <laughs> no, nah, I was on TikTok. We were in, I I was know on you TikTok. don't buy it, though. 
Hmm? You don't buy the dark saber. You just got to kill the person that has it, haven't you? That's how you get yeah. the dark saber. Uh, yeah, I don't think that like, works in real I, life. I think I'd be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be going to a convention again. But then so. you will have the dark saber, so it'd be pretty hard to arrest you. You know. Come on, then you. Fence. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Fight me! And then they go, dink, dink. It's just plastic. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I also got this lovely Garrus t- hoodie that I love as well. So <laughs> and I got my um, Astro. I got a triple XL, so that's why it looks like I got shoulder pads. <laughs> but Astro's playroom bone white hoodie uh, as we've learned what bone white is me and Dale both have been like I thought there was open. just one shade of white you know <laughs> um, bad um, people make, make it up no. but yeah so that, that's, that was pretty much everything from there and like as I mentioned earlier if anyone wants to uh See any more about the expo then um other than following them on twitter i don't know whether they're going to be active now that it's ceased until next year but you can also check out our youtube and website for more on everything that's happening there um but in terms of what we're going to come to next uh we talked on the last episode about the playstation plus and the new model that it gone to and, and obviously a lot of people have seen it in like terms of competing with xbox because it's game streaming services and um everyone competing to be the the game in netflix as it's been dubbed um and there's two stories that have come out quite recently which have kind of highlighted i suppose the two opposite sides of this um so one is from the guardian from monday which was talking about how there's been like quite a considerable cash influx into the gaming industry and developers as a lot more um, big companies from Microsoft and Sony, as we'd expect, but to Apple, um, Google, Amazon, um, and even Netflix, all pumping cash in to try and like cash in on like what is basically the biggest entertainment sector at the moment. Um, so this is seen as quite a, a quite a positive, even even for kind of independent um, third party developers. So they're saying that even those who have stayed independent are welcome to the new model in which game developers are paid significant sums up front to put their games on the service, greatly reducing the risk of a new title um, thinking without a trace, essentially. Um, and then on the other side. It was a story which came out uh, just today, actually, where Lorne Lanning, who's the creator of Oddworld, has said that um, it being part of the PlayStation Plus monthly bundle has meant it was devastating for the game sales um, because made, they made the deal on the expectation of around 50,000 to 100,000 copies being sold. And then because it was a free game, it was downloaded over 4 million times. Um, and then he's saying that that's um, a huge amount of sales that they obviously didn't get compensated for because of what they made the deal on the basis of. Um, so that's kind of like, I suppose, the two sides of it. But, but then, uh, any the, I suppose on? the other argument for that is how many of those people would have bought the game if it wasn't free? You know what I mean? How many did you say downloaded it? It was like 4 million, did you say? Yeah, 4 million yeah. downloads. I mean, how how many of them realistically are going to go out and buy an A... a, 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 a say the name, please. <laughs> okay. uh, Oddworld, Soulstorm. Oddworld, yeah, I'm thinking A, but like, um, how many people are actually going to go out and buy them? Because that's a pretty older game series, you know? It's, it's going to be more people buying in nostalgia and buying for like to think that up. people are not going to be looking at this like i suppose the younger generation like oh my lord this is a brand new do you know what i mean so i don't know how many of those sales would have been made maybe maybe i'm being a bit cynical um because I, I i love odd world odd world's incredible you know i watched my dad play through the majority of them but, but mm. you it's, know it's, how, it's how well did psychonauts do though because psychonauts is an older franchise 
Well, yeah, not. maybe maybe that's going to prove my um. Psycho not <clears throat> two or was it three? Uh, two, two. two. Sales. Don't know, Joe. Uh, sold one point seven million. It's not too bad. No, it's not no. not too bad. For, for the, the, yeah, I think the awkward thing is is like subscription services are like great for awareness, mm. but I. I like this is the because we're seeing this happening with Spotify as well. It's like because the amount of it that well, obviously it's a very different way of doing it. Where it's like it's more of a commitment to buy a, even like downloading a game is more of a commitment than listening to a song. Um, in a in a way, um, yeah, it's it's kind of like it's this weird thing of like it's great for awareness and kind of bringing because. Um, and like showing customers new games because you can bring it to the foot. You can like make that UI to um, to like focus on their likes and dislikes, mm. for example. So games they're going to play. So like you know like Oddworld, if you're playing, I I don't know, name a game that you could play. Like that, that's quite similar to Oddworld, but you, you know it's going to bring that to the forefront, make them aware of the game. And like you said, like the younger generation might not know what Oddworld was, so it's like. And like, yeah, like, I don't know. It's like a double-edged sword, in it? Yeah, it's good, it's bad. Because that's the thing that's always interested me. That like, I I can't comment because I've not researched, and I will go ahead and research because I do want to know. Is like, how much money do devs make off these? How much like you you know? The... Yeah, it's not. Because I suppose it's the safe bet, in it? To make yeah, it's, they make their money necessary because normally like they'll have their quota so if you make this amount of money normally you can make your next game blah 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 yeah so it's safe for that but then like i guess it's not safe in the sense that if that game is actually like a hidden gem and yeah you know uh, people want to absolutely go nuts with it and everyone buys it it won't make the money that it's got the potential to. It's it's weird because yeah, it, I, it, 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 like it's the safe play, but it also limits you, I suppose. You know, yeah. I think because like that's what Xbox has done really well is they're taking games off as well at certain points. Um, so yeah, it's like the whole thing with the longevity argument comes in there. Is like if the game is has enough like replay replay value. And it's like, I love that game. I played it on subscription service and I could buy it for like, I don't know, because obviously it's not going to be day one release now. Um, mm. I could buy it for like 30 quid. Like that, you know, surely that, like, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I think, um, I mean... The, the, throw me off. <laughs> what I was trying to say. The thing, the thing that possibly complicates it is, I mean, with Odd World, it wasn't on... so. I know it's being restructured and PlayStation Plus basically will be all in one. But at the moment, the equivalent of Xbox Game Pass is PlayStation Now, um, which is mm. where you can you go on and you can stream a bunch of games. PlayStation Plus is just the online subscription to play games, and then just each month gives you free, three free games, and so it was one of them. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, I mean, I get what Dale was saying, because, like, I... I've got PS Plus, and like as a habit, every single month I go on and I add every single one to my library, so I've got them for posterity. Even if I, yeah. I'm never going to play that game. Uh, and I did when I added uh, Soulstorm. This this one, um, I played it for a little bit, and then I wasn't overly wild to be honest. I didn't really stay with it, um, so it, it kind of just it's just sitting in my library now. But I imagine you know I'm not going to be loading that in the being the person who got right, I'm just going to build up my games library just every month. It's free. Take, take, take. Um, which is again different than it being just generally available. This is something you have to actively you you've got one month where you can claim it for free, and then you've got it as long as you've got that that subscription. So it's slightly different, but I don't know how much difference that makes to the actual sale. I mean that might. It might mean, you know, we say that 
if they were expecting 100,000, it might have sold more than that, but whether it would have sold 4 million is a whole other matter, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you, downloads are never... You, you're never going to equate sales to that. Like, if, <coughs> you're, if your game is on a subscription service, your downloads are always going to be well over your sales numbers, and you kind of need to take that on the chin, I think, as a dev. And But it's like, subscription services are fantastic for consumers, but they're not they're not great for creators, like, because of the, the return on investment and stuff, but yeah, it's just this like awkward thing where I think we need to kind of find a, the best middle ground now because like mm. subscription services are here to stay. Like they're not going anywhere. Mm. But it, I think it, it, like I said, it, it is also up to the game, the, the devs to make that replay value so great that the the player need like wants to buy the game if they're focused. Like, do you get what I mean? If it if goes focused. into the uh... yeah, yeah, because like, but then. I'm... That's that's quite awkward for story games though. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of story yeah. games are replayable, you know. Mm, well yeah. they are, but <laughs> once you know the story, it's like it's, it's different. Buying? Exactly. It's different to yeah, like yeah. being like uh in a binding of Isaac and games like that because you you're constantly doing the same thing, but it's enjoyable because you're doing that same thing and then the you know, the replayability comes through that gameplay. Yeah. You know? So is is it is it not a case of really thinking whether that game is going to do well on a subscription service and kind of, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but it, then, just... then coming from, like, the, the subscription service owners, you know, like Microsoft yeah. and stuff like that, they can't have it just be, like, a a one... Genre. Kind of. Yeah, one yeah, kind yeah. of genre subscription service, because there's no point by it. I mean, I'm, I've literally, I've got Game Pass up right now. Mm. I was just scrolling through as we were talking just to see what's new on there. And the amount of different games that are just hitting me straight away. Like, you've got, like, Warhammer 3, Age of Empires, Outer Worlds, Stardew Valley, Yakuza 5, Skyrim. Then you've got, like, all the Halo games being recommended to me, which are all games that I play. It's all recommended and stuff that I'd like. But there's just so much different stuff in there. I've named loads of, like, almost triple a games there but they're massive on like indie games in there and they yeah. love like throwing that stuff in but that wasn't a good representation to that but like if it was just literally me looking at it and it just being like oh you know um halo one two three four five the other shooter this shooter that shooter and it was just those games you'd be like wow well, i might pick this up one month for this new game coming out well, actually, shooters are a bad example, but you get what I mean. If it's a one fit kind of system, no one will buy it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not. I, 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 the, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying like it shouldn't alienate, but it's like you said, like games like bind, binding and stuff. You know, they like, fit that model a bit. Oh, well, yeah, is it? Is I, it? Like, I think it, it depends yeah. as well on because um, <clears throat> I mean, there's obviously we're leaving aside like the biggest triple a because i think even if subscription service didn't exist or you don't have it you, they're going to sell because people buy them because that's why they yeah AAA. yeah um it's more i mean whether it's kind of a case of like more of an issue of, of like the back end in terms of what type of deal they're making out how, how the amount of money compares to the sales like whether that's just a flat rate up front based on estimates or whether they you know look if if it's more, we need you know more. But but how you'd kind of judge that? Because I think it might be one thing to look at. I don't know if if um like it's got downloaded four million times on PS Plus. But then when you look at like the Steam sales, for example, which are sales sales people who don't have Playstations or PlayStation Plus, and it's actually only twenty thousand copies there or something like that, then that probably tells you a different story than. I'm not. I'm not saying that's an actual figure. That that was figure pl plucked out of the air, but that's probably a better judge. Like what they sold on a different platform that doesn't have that subscription service is probably a better indicator of the real. Yeah, I suppose so. But then, like, I don't know. I guess things go into like what genres are favoured on different consoles because I imagine there is. You know, there's a like a. A bias to different genres and different types of games on different. Cause I suppose it depends on the games that those publishers, uh, the you know the um, the home publishers are pushing out. If that's the right word, you know what I mean. So that yeah, yeah. kind of cultivates that um, that 
uh, community, not, community is the wrong word, but that kind of atmosphere, the, the games that they, they played. So, yeah, I suppose that's one thing they can do, but then yeah, I suppose the bias is kind of play into effect as well. It's weird, because, like, I'm I'm very, like, I'll look at these subscription services, and I think they're amazing. Like, I genuinely think they're absolutely incredible. But then you don't think about the back-end side of it, you know, the, yeah, the devs, cool. and I'm coming from a purely consumer point of view, and, you know, how cheap it is for the games that you get access to. You know, yeah. like, this yeah. would be a godsend to me as a kid, and especially my parents, you know, and, and growing up, you know. But Money. yeah, I mean, I mean, just just on that point, it's like, I mean, I, I don't think this is true for game because, like, the games industry is, as I say, in terms of monetary value, is so much bigger than any other entertainment. But like Netflix, for example, um, and presumably there's a similar tale with Disney Plus and Amazon. But um, although it's like the biggest streaming service that runs at a loss, like that doesn't actually make profits. Um, <laughs> so. You know, the, the, that's, that is the other side of it, which, which is on the one hand, it, it's good because it's cheap, but then if it's, if that means that eventually the, the kind of, it all runs out and then it collapses on itself and you've not yeah. got it anymore, then mm. again, that's not yeah, to say that that will happen with the gaming ones because I, I don't think it will because I don't think it's quite the same, but. Well, it says here that it's, a, uh, it's expected to reach $11 billion by 2025. The subscription service industry, uh, gaming specifically. In the gaming specific. Yeah, that's yeah, it's that, that's crazy. Insane. That's insane amounts of money. Yeah, but, but it, is that it, is that in that that's in terms of like gross money yeah. flying around both ways, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because, because obviously the profit is the subscriptions minus what they have to pay out to the different yeah. creators. I it doesn't say whether they're actually working at a loss or not, but um, but yeah. It, I, it, it like yeah, subscription service. I think they always will be a double-edged sword because it is great for consumer. It's great for awareness, but yeah, it, it's kind of and it is great for downloads and play and accessibility and everything else. But on the other hand, in terms of like running a development studio as a company, is it? Yeah, like, how viable is it? Do you know what I mean? And like, I, I'll de like hopefully like something comes up about this again so i can have numbers but yeah yeah maybe it's maybe it's worth actually sitting there because it's something that i've been genuinely interested in but just not not got around to actually you know reading up and and taking my time to figure out but i don't know how much information is widely available to be fair yeah it's not it's not too much no well, i mean one other thing that kind of feeds into the, the this issue is the the news um from today the um from the UK's competition and markets authority did an investigation into um automatic renewal of subscriptions and and one of the main results of that is the PlayStation Plus and with Nintendo Switch online are both um now gonna be contacting um so they've got to change their renewal practices for subscriptions so sony is going to contact customers who haven't used the service in a long time to show them how to cancel it mm. um and then if users neither cancel nor return to the service sony and tops paying payments all together and then nintendo no longer have automatic renewal set as the default option um meaning they have to manually activate the feature themselves so this yeah. is presumably people who just you know paid in at some point and I mean, I, yeah. I I did this with Xbox. I forgot to cancel my free subscription. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Funny enough, I did it on the opposite end of a PlayStation, where I I got it to play God of War. But this was like, about... that, that was the whole thing with like free month subscriptions. One, uh, the free like month subscription was that that's how they made their money. Is people forgetting, forgetting to subscribe? Yeah. But Which you think is... that's that's something that these services specifically in the gaming industry i don't really care about netflix and all that a lot they don't need to care about anymore but you still think it's a big part i, th I think it'll be, it'll be I, a I part think... but it's, it's like gyms isn't it as people sign up with the best intention and then it just falls by the... i mean even, I, I even think... with playstation like playstation now and playstation plus 
I use them, but not anywhere near as much as I probably could, because mm. I just. But I don't cancel them because I, I I feel like it'd be losing out more. So it's kind of like a, you know. Same. To be fair, I probably had Game Pass running for like the past five, six months. I don't think I've played a game on there for quite some time. Yeah. But it's just there because, like, oh, if I turn around and I see something I want to play, I'm like, oh, I'll just download that and I'll, I'll play it for a bit. You know. Yeah, I think I think the value of the Game Pass. Whether you use it for, because I, I I've got an Odeon card, for example, and it's like I watch one, I watch two films a month. I've already paid for my subscription. Do you yeah, know what I mean? and it's like it's the same with Gate. This it's like I, I say if I play Halo, it takes me eight months to get your money like, back. M- yeah, to uh, yeah to lose get, actually lose money. Like, yeah, you're worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah, you. Yeah. I get you. So it, it's it's like there's so much value in them that I mm. I don't necessarily because it's like it is. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one. Yeah, but a, but, um, a lot of a lot of people will make that calculation. I suspect. Just yeah, like, yeah. Even if I'm not just keep going through. Single. Yeah, I think I think there is an element of like oh, I kind of I kind of hope they forget, but I think it's like they they are just I think consistently they're proven that it is such good value for money that people don't want to, and I think that's where Netflix are now because I don't know whether they still actually do the free month trial now, because. I don't know. Oh, I am. I am going to scoop you. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, yeah so I'm not sure. Because I think if this has been investigated, surely that has. Like, yeah. There's no way. There's no way that. Yeah. But I, I just think, like, just from a, a consumer sort of, like, it, like, uh, connect, uh, connection sort of thing, like, you shouldn't have that on. Like, what if a kid signs up because they, their parents have left their, their thing on? Do you know what I mean? Or, or something i just think it's just it's yeah well that that was wrong. always the thing with anything like where it was like buying it online and like with gaming if it was kids gaming that it was like yeah how have you spent like a thousand pounds on our credit card <laughs> so yeah I mean, yeah 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 obviously there's a point where you should like look just don't have your your services on there <laughs> if you yeah. can't be trusted um but yeah that that's i suppose always going to be a risk when with Either with kids or with uh, adults who are responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Call me out like but that. No. <laughs> it's it's good because it, it it takes up that that scummy business practice. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's that that yeah customer yeah. relations. I think it just it it's improves good. it tenfold and like it's just yeah. I just think like be nice. Stop fucking trying to make money. Everyone, stop it. <laughs> I want to make money. Though. I'm sure Microsoft are there. Like that guy from Uncat, like he, he, he's yeah, going, yeah. Oh, trying to make money. I, 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 I was dedicated to capitalism, but now I'm going to become a socialist. I, our good old friend, friend Phil's like, do you know what? Yeah, he's right. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go but, speak to uh, Bill yeah, and we'll, like, uh, we'll sort it out. <laughs> just add good quality, man. Just that's and yeah. then, and I think I think oh. that's where like Game Pass is excelling is because it's good quality it's yeah. good value with it they're not trying to be scummy they're they're actually providing a very good service, service you know yeah, definitely so yeah 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 hmm. so have we got anything more to add on subscription services in general or uh, no i don't think so any final thoughts on that subject before we move on none at all that's no thoughts. Head is empty. <laughs> just, um, just stop trying to make money. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Give us games for free, everyone. I could. Yes, do we? Do we? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the final topic, um, because we always like to touch on how the games industry impacts on people in, in these podcasts. So, we're talking about, again, Activision Blizzard have been in the news. Um, with a few different things at the moment, but I think the so the two kind of biggest ones at the moment are the recent decision that they're going to convert um, a thousand quality assurance workers in the US um, to from contract workers to full time positions on at least twenty dollars an hour, um, and this excludes those um qa workers who are part of the 
um, did to unionize, um, which they've claimed is because with that unionization process, they're not allowed to introduce any new changes to contracts, but which is pretty transparent as far as being like an obvious union busting tactic of the you know the ones who didn't try and unionize are all getting this pay rise and news are getting screwed over. Um, <laughs> That's why unions are bad, okay? You don't get what you want through union. I'm joking, Phil. Please yes. don't kill me. It was a joke. That, that, Please that, don't that, hurt that, me. That's what Dale just said is, is pretty much the company line, I'm sure. <laughs> is it, is That'd be a actually, great company, man. Xbox, hit me up. Is that actually you. true, then? You can't change your contract whilst unionising? Well, it's... I mean... US the way the way it works in the US is different to in the UK, so ah, I don't okay. know I don't know what the nuances are there. But I mean if it was in the UK there, there, there was absolutely nothing. Uh, and no one's gonna take you to court for it if you raised people's pay. Uh yeah. <laughs> no one's gonna yeah. go, Oh, hold on, actually. Oh, um, this is terrible. How dare you pay them more? <laughs> they don't deserve that. There's probably <laughs> someone though. There is someone in there, let's be fair. Someone's out there. Damn. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, everything that they've been coming under the spotlight for is is kind of around comes back to all the cultural things and the issues over sexual harassment in the workplace, workplace treatment, uh, and this is also where the other big thing that's made the news for them is they've appointed a new head of diversity, equality, and inclusion um, called uh, Kristen Hines, who wants to build a workplace that values transparency equity and inclusivity which again it's really oh, it hard help. to it's really hard to see you know on face value whether this is something that's genuinely going to change something or whether it's like a pr type thing is like you know, look we've appointed someone going to do this and and then they think that appointing someone is enough and that, that the whole thing um so i don't know and then rather predictably um the, the main response that we've seen on Twitter is a load of people complaining that this just means the video games are going to get more woke and bad <laughs> so, oh. because yeah. people are just awful. Um, we don't want wokeness. Good lord. <laughs> uh, grrr. Can you imagine being angry at things just being How inclusive? dare he have curly <laughs> hair? How dare he? Can you imagine <laughs> actually getting wound up the things are, you know, including people? <laughs> <laughs> As far as I can see from like some of the biggest YouTube channels around, it pays really well to get wound up at that stuff. I suppose, yeah, maybe. Yeah, if you maybe if we're doing like, things wrong. Yeah, if like, yeah. Um, uh, but I think the thing is as well is like outrage bait. Yeah, the people people react to it and they're like they try to like kind of um, argue against it, and then that gives them more of a platform, and it, it's just like. Yeah, it's, it's a whole it toxic cycle. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. So if there's one thing I could suggest, is they, like I, I don't like to say it, but just if they're making YouTube videos, just ignore them or report <laughs> yeah. them because, like, then you feed you're, you're feeding the beast effectively. Like, mm. Yeah, but then that stuff even feeds them, and it's just it's weird. It, they're a weird group. Let's just all carry on and just enjoy the games, you know. But I mean, it, this is this is good news, though, right? Because you know, they're at yeah. least there's, there's, take... there's a real problem that needs to be because, t- like, um, I'm just looking through the article. Like, it says, um, like when in December 2021, when Blizzard released its representation data, like, um, women accounted for 24 percent of the workforce, and then uh, underrepresented ethnic groups made up about 36 percent. So it's majority white, majority male, um, and the kind of impetus behind that is to change that more and get more people in. Which, again, the the kind of reactionary, like you know, I'm angry at everything, I hate the world because everyone's not as miserable as me. Crowd, um, kind of see that as oh, well, you're just taking jobs away from people. You should you should you should just hire people on the basis that they're good to the job. Where actually. If people did that, there probably would be more representation. You know, it would be more representative of the wider mm-hmm. demographic of where you're hiring because people, you know, the the problem isn't that people are being more likely to be shoved into a job because they're, they're 
black up because the reward is the problem is actually the exact opposite, and it, it's you know, you're more likely to be hired over someone with the exact same skill set if you're white and male and and, and everything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a real problem that needs to be fixed. But like I say, it's it's the question I suppose is, does this mean a fix is coming, or and there is a genuine culture change, or does this mean that they have put someone in a position and claim that that itself's enough? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think the thing is as well is like we're really not. It's going to take a couple of years to kind of see the that happen if it is genuine. So it's mm. like we're not going to see like immediate change or anything but um yeah it's it, it like it's just one of those things we gotta gotta keep our eye out on and if it is happening then great like happy days do you know what i mean but if it's not it's like kind of we need like people need to almost put the pressure on them and if the union is there to do that then yeah great like do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah, well, yeah. well that's it that's Hopefully, more people will unionize because that. I mean, these are the tactics they always use to to bust unions is to just give things to all the workers who are not part of the union to kind of create a divide there and and present it as less favorable. All this rhetoric around, oh well, you don't want to be in a union because we're a family. You know, we're a family, and we, you know this outside influence is coming in to. Uh, They'll make you pay union dues, and then they'll they'll want to do really horrible things like increase your pay and make sure you're treated well in the workplace. <laughs> the bastards, the monsters. <laughs> Wait, do we have a union here at uh, Uncapped? <clears throat> yeah, I'd be the guy that squashes it out for fun. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't See, need to listen that, to that Phil. Would beg, that'd beg the question of who who our boss is. If we, <laughs> we or, or are we of, us. are we unionizing against ourselves? We all need to get in a boss because <laughs> none of us can manage anything. We are woeful. <laughs> oh, my, my employment opportunity is to shut down this podcast, haven't they? Like... <laughs> Please, we're going to be setting up a uh, GoFundMe for Lloyd's. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely... To pay for a change in name and identity. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to throw a management like thing. Uh, episode 19 of the Uncapped podcast. Please do like? not watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, a different person back then. Yeah, I was angry and I race quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't manage anything. Um, so, anything else happened? That, I'm sure there's been lots of other stuff because they, they seem to be in the news every two minutes, but. Anything I've missed or we've missed in that coverage that we want to draw attention to? No, no, like I mean, the only other thing that's kind of big that's happened was Kingdom's Heart Four got announced. If you care about that, they're so confusing. Like it's not my cup of tea. They just like I, I, they, they'd be very much my cup of tea. Like a hundred percent, I didn't. I agree that like Kingdoms of Heart, like you know me, I do like Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I do like like it's very. It, it reminds me very much like anime and you know stuff like that. It, it just it looks cool, but there's like Kingdoms of Heart one, Kingdoms of Heart one point one point two, Kingdoms of Heart three point seven point eight point one, Kingdoms of Heart this and that, and I was on my dissertation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> It's so confusing. It's just, it's so bad for them. That's generalizing the franchise because I know people love it, but it's so bad. So, that, that's for a new... like, local, local man confused by Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, let me let me pull Kingdom. King, I can't spell King. I, I, I spell... saw someone post like they were uh, on Twitter. They were like, "But oh, I'm gonna play uh, Kingdom Hearts." All of them uh, with my mate, and then he basically like just posted them all. They went on for like four lines. Are you ready? <laughs> this is the order that you're meant to play them in. I think. Oh wait, no. Oh my god, why do these ad? Why? Do... Why do journalistic things have so many ads on their thing? What the? Name. I just want a list. Yeah, I suppose, but they just pop up <laughs> everywhere. You can find the release order list first further down. Use the release order list. So it's Kingdoms of Heart, Kingdoms Hearts, Kingdoms Hearts Final Mix, Kingdoms Hearts Chains of Memories, 
Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts Coded, Kingdom Hearts 358 dash two days, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts RE Coded, Kingdom Hearts 3D Drop, uh, Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts X, which I'm assuming is 10, but I don't know. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Unchained X forward slash Union X, open brackets, 2015 forward slash renamed in 2017, close brackets. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep 0 0.2, a fragmentary a fragmentary pass a passage. Kingdom Hearts X Black Cover. Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC. Kingdom Hearts Dark Roads. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. It's like wh where, why? Why are there so many? Calm down. Like it's what Mickey happens? Mouse. Like do you know what, what I mean? What happens? So one, two, three, four, five. You know, bro, I mean. The, you know, that could yeah. be a podcast in itself. Like, um, I think it's Japanese numbering <laughs> conventions in particular. Japanese games seem to. Yeah, Japanese games seem to do it. Yeah. Um, I know, like, Final Fantasy is pretty bad for it, right? They got like 12.5, 16.8, 227.3 yeah. minus with, 18. With, with, Final, <laughs> yeah, with Final yeah. Fantasy, you can kind of see it because Final, each Final Fantasy numbered entry is a separate world so then you have like the ones within that world like the, like so like final fantasy 10 2 is the second one set in the final fantasy 10 world but it's it's all the games where it's one continuous like canon story or whatever. yeah and then it's i mean if you're into it i bet you it's amazing but like these games just make it so hard for a new player perspective and especially when you're like Oh, where do I start? And people are like, I recommend you start the Game Boy Edition that was released in 1982 with only three pixels that run the screen. But the story that it tells, it's just like, oh my lord. Just, well, they're beautiful uh, white but, pixels. But though. to be fair, the, oh. the, the best the best numbering convention ever is the Fast and the Furious franchise. <laughs> oh. Don't bore me with that. <laughs> too fast, too furious. <laughs> three fast, three gone. <laughs> It was fast, fast or five, fast. and Furious six, and <laughs> oh, and then you got like the what's it called? And they're the... too fast, too family. But anyway, uh, um, I think uh, well, numbering conventions aside, that that probably brings us about to the end of the podcast <laughs> we um after uh, we talked about everything that we intended to talk about and then we also talked about the numbering conventions of kingdom hearts which we didn't intend to talk about so thanks for that <laughs> no it's all right I just i gotta get my frustrations out there because i want to play it but i also don't want to play 18 games to find out why i should play it you know what i mean yeah, for for anyone who might be wondering why we took 10 minutes discussing that subject when we're 10 minutes later than Dale wanted to finish the podcast. Um, <laughs> it's of it Dale. makes no sense to us either. <laughs> My fault. Sorry. 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 Um, but now it's all in good fun. But however, that is it for this week's episode. Um, as ever, don't forget that you can find every episode of the podcast on your favorite podcast and service or on YouTube, um, where you can also find additional content like reviews, previews, and other commentary. So you should definitely subscribe to that if you're not already. Um, links in the description for everything ranging from our social media, where you can um, see us lurking and that nonsense, to our Discord server, where you can join and be part of the community and talk to us. Um, so, yeah, we're everywhere, and you should join us. That's we are everywhere. We are on the potent. I think that's the right word. Join the other <laughs> we, side. We, we don't have a union. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff becoming our logo <laughs> um, but yeah um, thank you very much for listening to our unprofessional nonsense and we will see you next time I have a wonderful time bye bye, bye, -bye. <laughs>